Hi guys, today I'm going to show you how I made these sunset inspired wall dreadlocks. They're really easy to make and there's no reason why you can make them yourself. In this part I'm going to show you how I section the wall and prep the wall for dyeing. For this set I'm using 500 grams of Icelandic wool roving. From past experience I know this will give me 50 double ended dreadlocks of the length that I like. I start by creating loops in the wall. This gives me a rough idea of the length the wall dreadlocks are going to end up. You have to bear in mind that with this technique they will sometimes stretch, so if you want shorter dreadlocks make sure you account for that when creating the sections. The sections didn't turn out quite as I'd liked, I only managed to get 24, so I decided to start again so I could get the 25 loops that I was aiming for. The next step is to split the loops. Do this by placing your hands roughly 4 inches apart and gently applying pressure. If you have your hands too far apart, it can split the wall unevenly and too close together and it will be too hard. Once the wall is all split up, I like to section them out into even piles. This just makes it easier to control when you're going through the dyeing process. Once I have them all sectioned out, I like to tie them together in the centre with a little bit of string. I do this to help control felting. If the strands are all loose, sometimes they can felt together in ways you wouldn't want to. Just remember not to tie them together too tight, otherwise it can cause white patches left on the wall during dyeing where the dye wasn't able to penetrate the wall correctly. After your wall is all sectioned out, it's time to get a large container to soak the wall. I like to use a wall wash to get any impurities off of the wall, but it doesn't really matter. You can also use citric acid for this and just skip the wall wash step if you'd like. Fill your container with hot water and then add in your citric acid or wall wash. Grab yourself a pair of rubber gloves. While citric acid and wool wash isn't particularly dangerous, it can irritate your skin and eyes, so it's always best to take precautions. Fully submerge the wool into the concoction and press down to get all the air bubbles out. Set a timer for 30 minutes and let the wall soak. Every now and then go back in and check on your wall. Make sure to press it down to keep those air bubbles out. It can also help to rotate it to make sure that the wool is fully saturated. Once your 30 minutes is up it's time to remove the wall. You can see how dirty the water's gotten in the half hour I've left it. That's why it's quite important to pre-soak. This just enables the dye to stick better. Squeeze out as much liquid as possible as you go along. If you use citric acid for the first step, you can skip this step now. To dye wool, you need to use an acid-based dye. This simply means that the dye needs to be activated using some kind of acid component. I'm using citric acid, but you can also use white vinegar. The technique I use to dye these threads is called hand painting. This requires the wall to be pre-soaked in an acid component in order to have the dye activate correctly. I use universal indicator paper to check the acidity of my soak. You don't have to do this, but it's just a precaution that I like to take while doing it. As you can see it's orange, 
this means it has an average level of acidity. Neutral is green and anything from blue and purple would be alkali. Finally, soak your dreads for another 30 minutes and you're ready to go on to the next step. 